Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about Gemini 3 Pro and my thoughts on the new model. Uh, yesterday it got released and yesterday I spent, as you can see here, 54.6 million tokens uh, inside of Cursor on Gemini 3 Pro. So until you can really give an accurate response on a model and give an opinion about it, you really do need to use it in real world production code settings. So yesterday I probably used it for six hours and I have to say, um, initial thoughts are I'm very impressed and I'm gonna show you why in this video. We're gonna compare um, essentially what I did with Gemini 3 Pro yesterday to the previous View Creator website. So over here on the left side of the screen, you can actually see um, some of the work that I'm gonna show you. But with that being said, I wanna show you inside of Cursor what this model costs. You can see Gemini 3 Pro right here and the pricing compared to some of the other models. So you can see that Gemini 3 Pro inside of Cursor, the input is $2 cash write, $2 cash read, 20 cents, and then output $12. And then when, so when you compare that to GPT 5.1, you know, it is a little bit more expensive by maybe like 25% on average. Um, but not terrible. I mean, when you compare it to something like Opus, you know, it's a lot cheaper where Opus is $15 per input and $75 on the output and then Sonnet is $3 on the input and $15 on the output. So it is a more affordable model. It kind of goes in between GPT 5.1 and Claude 4.5 Sonnet or, you know, Claude 4.1 Opus. So I like that about it. It's kind of that in between on pricing, but in terms of actually how capable of a model it is for vibe coding, that's really what I want to talk about today. So um, let's pull up cursor and I just want to show you guys what I did yesterday. Uh, we can go to all of these olders. As you guys can see, I was working a ton on all of this related to uh, actual functionality, right? So what did I do yesterday? What did I do? What I want to show you is I actually want to show you the complete redesign of the viewcreator.ai website that Gemini 3 Pro did. Now this is not pushed yet to production. So here I'm on viewcreator.ai and then over here I'm on my local host. So we have not yet pushed this code, but we're actually going to compare what Gemini 3 Pro did. And if you guys watched my stream yesterday, you know, I was streaming for about a little bit over three hours using the model doing this, but you know, we spent 54 million tokens. What did that actually get us, right? So, you know, let's take a look. So you can see here that, you know, I just had this slider and then the website was like very, very plain with like, here I'll move my, uh, my, my face came out, but you know, you can see that, it, you know, just very plain, um, typical, it kind of looks AI. Um, you know, I'm not super impressed. There's like problems here with this section. This section works with every platform is like, this looks terrible. Um, just not super impressive website, right? So super text heavy from the blog. This doesn't even, you know, load anything in. So this here not, doesn't fit with the theme. So, you know, lots of issues that we had with the previous site. And what I did on stream yesterday is I pretty much went over to Gemini and I said, hey, I want you to completely re-envision this, right? And what it did is it created this site that you're seeing on the left. So it says your command center for social media growth. And it created a really cool, and I actually want to expand this. It created like a really cool demo, an interactable demo. So you can see here that like this would give a user kind of a view of what the view creator dashboard looks like, right? So I like what it did here. It's kind of unique. You know, it doesn't look AI driven. It did these animations in the background um, for like the different social accounts. Also the nav bar is super impressive now. So the nav bar, you can see that I updated the nav bar to have features, platforms, pricing, and then resources. So you compare that to this nav bar and it's like, okay, like that did a pretty good job with, um, with that. I'm very impressed. And then even if we shrink it down and take a look, what does it look like on mobile menus? Look at the mobile menu. The mobile menu looks fantastic. So in terms of UI, I was incredibly impressed by the Gemini 3 Pro model. Uh, I think that the UI, in my opinion, you know, these Sonnet models or the Opus models have been uh, known for good UI, but I would say that Gemini 3 Pro actually beats out Claude uh, for UI now. So you can look at this. So this is like kind of that all major platforms and look at this. It, it did perfect hover effects and it actually then created all of these pages. So this page here, this one was created by Gemini, the entire thing, right? And it was just through one prompt. I just said, hey, you know, go create the entire page and look at all this. You know, it's, it, uh, it really did a good job 
creating like very good component driven rather than text driven sections. And I really liked that. And, and this was pretty much all a one shot. So that was a one shot there. Let's go back to the homepage. And it did that with all of these pages. It created the skyrocket your Instagram engagement. And it did a great job on even like the title tags, Instagram management and automation with view creator, you know, like all these things that are you know, small things that you notice where you say, okay, this is actually a very, very capable model, you know, so stop the chaos, start the flow. And this is just UI. And I'm going to get into the, you know, back end functionality and what I think on that as well. But here's, you know, this section, this section, here's the publishing and the content calendar. I mean, look what it did. I mean, I didn't give it any, you know, I did not give it any specific prompt on like create this section. It was able to intuitively do this. So I've been, you know, very impressed in terms of its creativity good animations here. Um, the reviewer section looks a lot better. Frequently asked questions looks good. And then this looks a lot more on theme. Maybe the buttons need to be changed. But in, all in all, very impressed by what it did. Also, I made updates to the pricing page. So this is the updated pricing page from uh, from Gemini. So you can see the responsiveness there is pretty good. And if we compare that to the pricing page over here, you know, very, very good, I would say. I think that's a substantial improvement from what we had before. So in terms of UI, I think that there is actually a new leader in terms of which model is the best and most capable in terms of AI or, or UI. And I think that it's now this Gemini 3 Pro model because in order to one shot all of this, you know, that's guys, that's pretty impressive. I mean, you're talking about one shotting completely unique components that don't look like they were created with AI. I'm just very impressed. Um, I love what it did with the nav bar. So from a UI standpoint, I would say probably I would give it a 10 out of 10 um, to be completely honest with you. I think it's very good. Now let's actually go to the view creator dashboard and we're going to talk about some of the back end functionality that it built rather than the UI. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to once again, kind of shrink this browser so we can compare and I can show you guys what this actually created. So let me log into my view creator account over here on my other monitor. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you guys the features that it was able to create. So let's go over to, oh, actually, so I did push this. So actually we can just use one. So I did push this code and it is fully working in production. So first of all, I can't compare what it looked like before because I already pushed it and it's already fully functional. But if I go over to YouTube and I go to manage videos, I want to show you some really unique functionality that uh, Gemini was able to build pretty much in one shot. You guys can watch the stream from yesterday as I was building this on stream. But a couple things, let's actually go to a different video so I can show you uh, let's do this one. So this vibe coding, no talking stream, right? So this stream has no tags. It has just a standardized thumbnail. Um, it's, it's, you know, you can see, so we changed this, but the backend functionality that we actually built is we made it so that users can click enhance with AI and we can just say, we can give it a prompt. This is optional. So if I just want to improve it, I can just click generate and it's actually going to be able to improve the description that was already there or I can pass in instructions. So let's just try generate here and it says description generated successfully and then it completely rewrote the description, right? So it added hashtags. It added um, just a little bit more text and content about, you know, what the video was about. And I can do the same thing with tags. So if I click suggest tags, the same thing is going to happen. In seconds, it literally is able to render in all the tags associated with what, with what this video is. And it's able to take in the context of this video. And I think we got this in one shot with Gemini 3 Pro yesterday. So the ability to be able to do this is incredible. I can do the same thing with the title. Now, you know, with the title here, um, you know, this title, we don't really want to change the title. Vibe Coding Nose Talking Session number six, you know, um, we don't want to actually change that. But really, really impressed with, um, with, with what, with what Gemini 3 Pro was able to do. I mean, it was able to one shot all these features. Um, it was able to do from database updates to backend API updates to f amazing job on the front end. I think that's probably, um, this is going to be my go-to model for the front end UI. And, you know, I just am very, very impressed with what it was able to do. And, you know, I think it will take some time to get used to this new model as, you know, with all these models, it does take time to say, okay, where is this going to fit in my workflow? But just after using, you know, 54 million tokens on it, 
in to see what it was able to build and the updates that it was able to make to the home website i have to say that i am very very impressed i mean you guys can let me know what you think in the comment section down below but in terms of what it was able to do in the front end ui i would say that this is probably the best model now for front end development for the user interface and then in terms of um, the back end i think that it is it does have that one shot capability and also one thing that i want to touch on is when you're talking about speed right if we if we take speed into the equation which is huge obviously you know something that's going to be more prevalent and important in 2026 as a vibe coder is how fast are these models right how fast are they and i think one thing that i've already found is that you know gemini 3 pro if you were to put it in between you know if you were to compare gbt 5.1 with claude with Gemini, I would say that in terms of speed, Gemini is gonna fall in the middle, right? GBD 5.1 is very slow. And, you know, that's actually causing me to change my mind a little bit on the GPT family, just because, yes, you know, I have a task, I give it to GPT, and it does have the ability to think fast or slow now. That's kind of like their big pitch with the GPT 5.1 update. But what I found is that on average, the latency on that model is significant, whereas Gemini 3 obviously are, uh, also has that capability to think fast or slow based off of uh, the prompt that it's been given. But on average, based off of my work yesterday, I found that the Gemini 3 Pro model was faster than GPT uh, 5.1, but slower than Claude 4.5 Sonnet, okay? So it kind of falls in the middle. So I think that this is like an in the middle model, which is nice, um, you know, cause it's just another tool that's now added to our toolbox, right? Like if you, I think that there's always gonna be a different place for different models in your workflow. And one thing to just remind you guys is that, hey, GPT, or not GPT, but Gemini, 2.5 pro was essentially unusable at, th at this point you know it, it it was released in march of 2025 it was old uh it did not do very well on benchmarks with coding and you know even like models like glm 4.6 were beating gemini 2.5 pro so you know now that we have this better model you know, I do think that you should start figuring out how to integrate it into your workflow because there's a place for each of these models in your workflow. So I, <coughs> I highly recommend trying this model out and seeing where it fits in your workflow. But for me, after four, 54 million tokens, you are definitely gonna see me start to use this model more on stream, especially for UI. Um, especially for backend development. I think that it does a good job across the board, but with UI, it just did an incredible job for me. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up the video, but definitely a BridgeMind approved model. Let me know what you guys think in the description down below, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video.